Hey guys and welcome back to another Access Zone 2 video. In today's video I'm back doing another interview and I'm here with Jordan Dujon. Jordan, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing, mate? I'm great. Thank you very much for coming on the channel and doing this. No, you're welcome. Great. Okay, so am I right in saying you're 29, you're a super welterweight and you're 7-1? and one? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, soon to be 8-1. and one. Yes, great. Okay, if you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like the video if you do need like the video, and let's get straight into it. So, the question which I like to start off with is why did you get into boxing? Uh, it's funny actually, I got into boxing really late. Um, it was actually AJ winning his world title that sort of right. inspired me to get involved into boxing. So, it was very late, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and um, I suppose to. A lot of upcoming fighters now there's a there's a real inspiration for somebody like anthony joshua uh coming through and doing what he's done in the division and i suppose in i how do i put this what would you say to to him now because of what what he's been through and uh, do you think he can come back stronger yeah you know what i think um the Mayweather effect has messed up boxing. Yeah. Um, boxing, you always saw the best fight and the best. People had losses on their record. Um, their career was defined by who they fought. Did they fight the best? Um, AJ's got a phenomenal career already. Um, he's just taken away the use of fights. There were still great fights. He's improving. And sometimes off your losses is where you get the most growth. So, yeah, of course he can come back now. Definitely. Okay, and we'll, we'll move back on to your career now. So, do you remember what happened in your first amateur fight? Yeah, 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 I do actually. Um, it was, and to be honest with you, it wasn't one of them barn burners. I was trying to be techy with it, but <laughs> nothing was going the way that I thought it would. <laughs> right, okay. Did you end up getting the victory or not quite? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I got the victory. Yeah. Nice, okay. So did you then go on a bit of a, a bit of an amateur run and what was your biggest achievement from the amateurs? Yeah, so uh, my amateurs was very short. Um, mm two years mm -hmm. so my first year i had five fights i had five fights i won four um and then the next year i had uh, another 15 fights mm -hmm. so out of that i won a development and i won a nationals and okay. straight from now i turned professional mm -hmm. great and so why did you turn pro when you did um, you know what, I think whereas I started so late, it was literally just a case of, I know that amateur style of boxing and professional boxing is two different things, so mm -hmm. I wasn't ever going to go down the Olympic route, mm -hmm. so it was a case of, alright, where am I going to, um, if I do want to be a professional, I've got to learn the pro style now, Yeah. Uh, rather than wait years and years developing as an amateur, that's not going to serve when I transition over. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's a, that's a good response. And so you've now had a, a decent amount of pro fights, and you you still had a decent amount of amateur fights. And I was kind of interested in what would you say the differences are between the amateur and the pro game. Um. Okay. So with the amateurs, it's very fast paced. Um. I mean, you're really fighting for three rounds. Mm -hmm. Um. With the pro game, everything's slowed down. It's a lot more spiteful. Um, with the amateur side of it, it's literally just your point scoring. Mm -hmm. So it's very rarely that you're sitting down on shots. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can set a lot more traps up in in the pro game. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that's that's fair. That's fair. And so you've you've had the the eight fights now, and I was interested in which fight would you say have you performed your best in? My best in. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um... That's a tough one, mate. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think on paper it would be the um, maybe uh, Lee Halliott. I don't think he really landed a punch. Um, mm -hmm. Not that I can remember. Um, but yeah, probably that one. Mm -hmm. No, that it's good that you you can't you can't pinpoint one because it, that shows that you have a you're very consistent in your performances. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah. Great, and so unfortunately you have suffered the one defeat, and I was wondering how how tough is it to bounce back from a defeat? Um, it's tough. Um, probably more so ego than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's like anything, mate. You just got to roll up your sleeves, see what's going on, um, and yeah, just just bounce back. 
Mm -hmm. And you de you definitely did that, and you have now, like you said, you you're trying to turn eight and one, and so you've got a fight. Am I right in saying for the first of October? Yeah, first of October. Yeah, for Southern Area. Mm -hmm. Great. And so, have you started a a camp for that, or have you just upped the training intensity? Yeah, yeah. So I've been in a camp for this now. Mm -hmm. Great. How long about says your uh, will your camp last? Um, I. I've known about this for maybe seven, eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seven, eight weeks. So a good, solid, long camp. Great. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would imagine you're you're trying to sell tickets for this fight, and I was wondering why should people come and watch you? What makes you different? What well, makes me different? I think in my fights, you're always going to get excitement. You're mm -hmm. one minute you'll get the boxing, next thing you'll get a tear up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's always an entertaining watch. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, that is uh, definitely something that, personally for me, I always like to look for when I'm looking to go to a boxing match. Just somebody that can do the technical side, but can also just make it a, a good a, a good tear-up every so often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 that's, it's, that's, you got to have a fan-friendly style. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants someone who's just running around the ring. Yeah, for definitely. 10 12 rounds yeah you want you want to see someone get in the mix mm -hmm. yeah i get it so you you spoke a little bit about your age i mean you're not overly old for the part of where you are in your career but you spoke a little bit about like it is why you turned pro when you did and stuff like that and so are you are you trying to be really active at the moment and if so are you trying to fight again before the end of the year um, yeah, I mean, it's one fight at a time, mm. but um, yeah, off the back end of this, I'll be out again very soon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, activity is key. It's literally just keep getting out, keep getting out, keep getting out. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And so you are just around about at the start of your career. You're, you're progressing very nicely. And so I was wondering how far do you believe you can go in the sport? Um to be honest with you, I, I, I know I'm going to win a British title. Mm -hmm. um, I believe I can do that. Um, going on to European and Worlds, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure who's... At, actually, I think Charlie's got the world title belts. Charlie, uh, yeah, I think Charlie's undisputed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, whether he's there in another two, three years' time, I don't know. But... You never know. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's good inspiration expectations i suppose and it seems like a lot of people kind of aspire to go to that british belt as it is such a prestigious belt yeah 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 no definitely mm -hmm. and so you spoke a bit about uh charlo as the undisputed champion and i was wondering if you could possibly give me a a dream opponent a dream opponent i uh have -huh. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll take a uh, U-Stick for the undisputed payday. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, no, that's fair. No, I think, um, on a serious note, I think at that point, I think Errol Spence will probably be up at 154, mm -hmm. if I'm honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that'll be a dream fight. Mm -hmm. oh, great, okay, yeah, definitely, he's a, uh, a definitely big name, and so... You you, mm. you spoke about him, and I was wondering if you could possibly give me a bit of a prediction of... So, if... I don't know if this is confirmed, but uh, if Errol Spence and Terence Crawford are going to have a fight, mm. who would you say would come out on top? You know, I've gone back and forth with this one for a while, mate. Um, <sighs> technically, uh, Crawford's, I, I think he's, he's better, mm -hmm. but I, I think the weight advantage of Spence, um, I think that will be a key factor. Um, Terence isn't a small guy, but yeah, I think, I think Spence is a naturally bigger man. Mm -hmm. great yeah definitely and uh it it would be an amazing fight and definitely a fight that everybody wants to see yeah no 100 yeah i've been looking forward to it mm -hmm. great and so i'll leave it with this final question which i always like to ask you've got a little bit of a platform here would you like to shout anything out uh, i just want to say thank you to my sponsors my coaches um everyone has come and support um buying the tickets come and help me throughout my career just thank you mm -hmm. yeah great great guy all right and so thank you very much for doing this interview mate and um give it give it a few years and i'm sure you'll be fighting for them british belts or maybe even worlds at that point and i would i would, I would love to have you back on the channel at that point yeah no, i'll be happy to come back mate great okay well if you're on your own here and you haven't yet subscribed please do so like if you do any like video and thanks for watching